Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, today we're going to be working on something that's not really vintage, but it is machinery and I use it in my shop. And uh, I thought I'd make an interesting video because this is a fairly common problem that people have with uh, this kind of an air compressor. Uh, and basically what I've got, this is a Porter Cable, um, you know, I forget how many gallon tank this is or whatever. I've had this air compressor. I was actually trying to remember thought it'd been about 15 years. Um, I looked on the, the tank and it has the date the tank was made. It was made in 2000. I'm shooting this in 2017. So, you know, I've had this thing probably 17 years, almost 18 years now, and uh, haven't really had any trouble with it whatsoever. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were having a work day out here at the shop. We were using uh, the air compressor a good bit for running uh, some uh, uh, annealed scaler. And about halfway through the day, I noticed that uh, the air compressor was having a hard time keeping up. We broke for lunch and I could hear it outside. It was running all through lunch. And when we came, I came out after lunch, it was just sitting there running wide open, but the pressure on the tank had dropped down to zero. And I pretty much knew what had happened because I've had experience with these before. Basically, uh, the, the piston and cylinder in this air compressor uh, is basically made to be disposable. When it wears out, you just replace it. And uh, I figured out what's going on. So anyway, we're gonna talk about how to fix this air compressor and basically get it back into service where it's uh, in pretty much like new condition by replacing the cylinder and piston. Let's get in here and take this thing apart and show you the process. First step here is we need to take the little shroud off and uh, there's a couple little screws holding this in. It's using a T25 bit, a torque bit. Um, I'm just going to unscrew. There's one on the front and there's one on the back here. Okay, and I got those off. And from there, I think this originally had a cover up top. Uh, it's gone. I don't know what happened to that, but uh, if you got one, you'll have to figure that out. But there's just a couple little clips on here. And this plastic case just comes right off. You've got spiders inside and everything. Okay. Now, when you get in here, uh, I can see the piston is intact. A lot of times on these, uh, the piston will actually break. Uh, and it's real easy when that, you see that when it happens. So uh, I haven't had this apart yet, but I still suspect that my rings are bad on this. Uh, but like I said, very common, you'll see the piston break on this. It's the same process to replace it. So uh, let's get in here. First thing I need to do is uh, take this little air uh, piece off here that goes from the pump down to the tank. Uh, on this one, it's just a 5 8 inch bolt or nut here. We'll put that in there. Pull this out. Use this as flare or has an O-ring and it does have a little plastic uh, ring in there to seal it up. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is we'll zip off these uh, screws on the top. So on the back, there's a nut that goes on top of a stud just holding a little clip in place so I just pull that off um, there's two of them and that was using I think a 3 8 inch uh, deep well socket excuse me 7 16 so we're looking at this from a little bit different angle now and you can see there's a uh, two screws on the front and two on the back the ones on the back have a little tab on them and I'm going to just zip off uh, there's a, a nut on the top and then a clip on the bottom here that just kind of holds that in place. We're going to pull those off real quick. And that's just using a 7 16 inch deep well socket. And I'm going to flip over now. Uh, the, the bolts up underneath that are on a 3 8 inch. Um, so I've got a 3 8 inch deep well on here. Now you need deep well to go over the stud on this side. And I'm just going to zip these uh, four bolts out. All right. So when you do that, you can pull the cylinder head off. And uh, when you do, there's just a cover here. Uh, and then there's a little uh, diaphragm plate. Uh, there's a little o-ring here that seals that uh, this is just basically made where the when it compresses air i think this is a little flapper that opens the valves up and closes them when it's on the downstroke uh, and then you have your air, air intake on the other side and then there's a little uh, sleeve in here 
And this is the actual cylinder, and I'm looking here, I can see scoring on the wall. I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, but it's obvious that that piston has scored the side. So, uh, and I can see here on the piston itself uh, where the, the rings, the little rubber rings that are in there have come out. So let's remove the piston next. Uh, again, we'll come in here. There's a little nut right here, or bolt screw that pulls this little fan off. And that comes off. You can see the piston back there behind it. And uh, just like the other ones I've seen, there's this piston rides on a uh, bearing in here and it's just got a compression fit on there. So we're gonna loosen that up and take it off that bearing. And on this one, it's held in place by a T25 torque screw. So we'll uh, loosen that up. And voila, the piston comes out. And you can see right here, uh, the ring in there is completely gone and it's gotten into the metal here and uh, scored in the side of that cylinder. I'll zoom you in closer here so you can see that a little bit better. So just a close up, first off you can see this is the cylinder and down here on this bottom you see the scoring in there and that's actually pretty deep and rough scoring. Uh, it's really gonna just, uh, this is just a piece of sheet metal that's pressed. It's nothing real expensive so just replace it. Just get a new one. And then same thing on the piston. Uh, we got a, the ring here is bad and we've actually dug into the metal. And I know from past experience that these ring or these pistons uh, very often will, will break uh, over time. So um, anyway, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna end up doing is I've ordered a kit uh, that comes with a, a new piston, new rings and new cylinder and uh, new gaskets and we're just going to replace all of that. Uh, I was able to pick it up for about, I think it was 35 bucks or so for the whole rebuild kit. Uh, found it on Amazon. Uh, I was able to look up my air compressor on the Porter Cable website and it told which kit to use and, uh, and then I was able to go out and find that. I ended up getting mine from Amazon. You can get them from lots of different places. You can order them directly from uh, Porter Cable. So we'll wait for our kit to get in here and when it does, uh, we'll put this thing back together. Well, I've got all my parts here that we took off and I've got here the rebuild kit that I ordered uh, through Amazon.com. This is a particular one here uh, for mine is a model, our number KK-4835. Uh, I'm sure they have different kits for different uh, compressors, but ironically this kit right here fits a lot of the compressors that are out there. But anyway, let's show you what's in the kit and we'll go ahead and start reassembling this thing. Pull it out. Things wrapped up in here. So what we got is a couple of new uh, seals here that'll go on this uh, block here. There's one seal here and one on the bottom. We've got a new uh, cylinder to uh, replace the one here that's uh, got the bad ring on it. And Oh, excuse me, that was the piston, and this is a cylinder, and of course it's got nice clean walls in it. So let's uh, start. We find a little pick or something to pick those uh, rings out, those gaskets out, seals, and we can replace those. We got a little pick here, and we can uh, hopefully just come in here and get up underneath that old sealed air that's all flattened out now. Pull that one out and stretch the new one in there and that will compress down uh, once we put it on over there. And uh, same thing for this bottom one here or the top one actually. Pull that one out and we'll stretch the new one in there. All right, that looks good. So we're ready to start putting this back over here. So we'll drop the new uh, cylinder down in. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead, this piston, there's actually a little 
flange down here in the bottom. So this piston rod needs to actually come in from the top uh, for it to really go in right. The one that was on there before didn't have a flange or either the flange was worn off. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of get that in there temporarily. I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and uh, get this cylinder attached. Or, let's just go ahead and get this piston attached while we're in here. Loosen that up. All right, that's, that's on there. That piston just kind of rocks back and forth in there. And there is some guidelines on the torque for these uh, nuts and bolts. So I'm gonna wait and we'll tighten that up in just a minute. But let's go ahead and get the rest of this top on here. Next uh, comes this little plate. We got our new O-ring in the bottom that will fit over the uh, cylinder. And I can feel it, it's, it's uh, engaged properly. And then again, making sure we got the right side. You can see where that gasket goes on this side. This one goes here and we will Go ahead and get these bolts started on here. I think I'm just gonna snug them down with my impact gun, but not really torque them. Let's go ahead and get these started on this side as well. Uh, the ones on this side have the stud that comes up above the top. And I'm just gonna zip these down. I'm not torquing them at this point in time. I'm just wanting to get them kind of snug down. All right, that's got those on there. And uh, we can go ahead and tighten up our air line as well. Okay. Well, according to the instructions, these uh, little head bolts on here need to be torqued down, but not super heavy, only seven to 10 foot pounds. Uh, on here. So I've actually got a, a torque wrench that's probably overkill uh, for what we're working on here, but uh, it will read in 10 pound increments. So I'm just going to come through here and we will do them. We're going to go across it's got some play in there to tighten up. Come around so I can watch my that's about 10 pounds. All right, that's about 10 pounds. And that one's about 10 pounds. So those are torqued down. Next comes uh, down here on the bearing, and let's see what the instructions say about that. All right, this says it needs to be between 35 and 40 foot pounds. Um, so again, I got my, tell you what, let me uh, just snug that up again. I'm not gonna torque it, but I am gonna just Get in there until it's tight. There we go. All right, there we go. That's about 35 pounds right there. So that'll be good enough. And next we got the uh, little fan shroud here. There's uh, two little uh, keyways in there that there's matching holes in here for. So it'll only go on in one place. And we'll just zip that on with the uh, impact socket here. There we go. And finally, we'll put our little clips back on the side here. And one thing I've noticed is, is that my intake filter 
over here is broken. I need to order that new part separate, but there's a filter that goes right here on the side. And uh, at some point in time that became broken and I realized that when I took all this stuff apart. So uh, I'll go ahead and order that part and we'll put it on at a later date. All right. So now we will uh, put our covers back on here. And I think we'll have this uh, air compressor back in running operation. All right. I see if she'll hold air. over here so uh, we'll let this cycle in. I can already tell it's a lot quieter than it was before. Well there you go a quick and relatively easy uh, repair to get this air compressor back up and going. Uh, we replaced the piston, we replaced the cylinder and uh, it's holding good pressure now pumping right up actually a lot quieter than it was before and uh, hopefully this will give me another good 10 or 15 years of service. Now one thing I'll say I'm actually about to be upgrading air compressors here in the shop this is, like I said, one I used to use in my old garage shop many years ago. Then I've got my big shop here. Uh, I've got an uh, industrial size air compressor that I should be getting here pretty soon. Uh, but we're going to keep this one around as a backup. And it's, uh, it's, it is still fairly portable. So if I'm going out on a job site or something somewhere and need something more than like a pancake compressor, I'll, can, I'll have this one to carry around with me. Uh, but it is nice to have it all fixed up again. So there you go guys, uh, how to change out cylinder and piston uh, in a Porter Cable air compressor. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, leave me some comments, leave me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.